Hey guys, welcome to episode number three in a playlist about a kit guitar we are building that is going to go to a Delta Blues trash band in Ireland. We already sent one of my guitars over there and it just couldn't hold up to the beating that is Irish blues music. And I will give you a playlist right up there now. You observant ones, you loyal viewers, are probably looking at this going, what is that CD? Well, in most circles, that means civil defense. And if you were around in the 1950s and 1960s, you know that there was a Cold War going on, and we were in classrooms being told to lay under Reynolds Wrap and newspaper so the bomb didn't get us. Have you seen Oppenheimer? Okay, then, I'm not going to do movie reviews, even though I should. Go see it. Yeah, go see it, especially if you are my age or, as most of you people in my demographic are, older. Anyway, you know that I get off out in the weeds. And you know this guitar, if you've watched my channel, from an episode called What's in the Case, Comrade. It's up there. Some of you know that I am a publicly elected official. I went out and filed my papers for the term I was, uh, well, I guess I won or something, or no one ran against me or something like that. And the incumbent candidate is still there, that being me. But the day I filed my papers, I went out and bought an arch top, and the guy who was selling me that guitar, says, oh, I have something you'll want to see, he said. I said, is it an arch top? He said, no, it's a flat top. And um, guess what? What's the worst thing can happen if you're in politics? Oh, yeah, you're going to get some from Russia. So this guitar is from Russia. And I, I think I should just shoot a little episode about this because I ran across something on a luthier channel the other day where they were talking about how do you get the neck off one the the Russian arch tops this is a flat top by the way this is spruce little strips uh, they were pretty economical about putting stuff together it has nylon strings anyway their guitars with F holes had a pick guard with a half of an F hole here anyway someone was saying how do I get the neck off of this so they were looking at that bolt in there and trying to figure out how to unscrew it and then of course we all know, those of us that infiltrated the system, an American drum key of all things will adjust this neck up and down. The action goes up and down very easily. Anyway, where were we? By the way, that guitar was made on Tammy's birthday in 1973. And if you're asking yourself, who is Tammy? Well... Your intel isn't that great, comrade. Anyway, back to this. This is a kid guitar. It has a single cutaway. It's a guitar kit, world kit. And this, like I said, is the third episode. There's a playlist popping up there right about now. We opened the box. We showed you what the thing looked like. We went to work on the body. It wasn't this color. Then we went to work in the second episode on the neck, and now we are going to finish this up by junk piling it out, putting the electronics in it, wiring it up, and doing the little touches that make it unique. Now, I've told you that if you buy a kit guitar, don't try to make it a pass it off as a Gibson or Eddie Van Halen's guitar, because you're not going to do that. And what my videos are about on these kit guitars is to tell you, hey, these things are tough. I can literally go out and dig a hole with this guitar. I think I'm going to do that sometime. Uh, and, and, and so the things that I worry about with old arch tops that are going to be on the road with a band like the one this is going to is night after night, an 80-year-old guitar will ultimately break down. I can make this look like the 80-year-old guitar, individualize it the way I want to, and come out with a product that will last for another 80 years and really take a beating. So we're going to go to the bench. I'm going to wing through some stuff. I'm going to dress this up a lot more than it is and individualize that. So let's spend some time at the bench, and I'll see you at the end with something that looks a lot different than this does now. Okay, guys, back to work on the body of this 
kit guitar that's going to go off to Ireland, the first thing we want to do before we start putting all the fancy scrapparatus on here is we need to black out this body on the inside because you don't want everything looking like bare wood. So we'll just take some oat gall ink here and the right kind of brush. And remember that this stuff darkens up as it goes. And we are going to make sure that the body on the inside does not look like worms first day in the oil field. If you don't know what that means, well, you will at some point, I guarantee you. So, old gall ink brush. It's like an old man in the dark. It ain't that hard, people. All right, there's a second coat on the inside. It's blacked out good. And so anybody peering into the F holes will be able to think this is an old junky guitar. Do you know that in the deep south where it was very humid, people used to put shoe polish on their guitars? Did you know that? So if you see a black guitar that seems out of place, you might take a little Mr. Queen of Magic Eraser and see if there's not shoe polish hiding something underneath. Anyway, waiting for oat gall ink to dry. Okay, guys, the angle on this is a little cattywampus, but that's because it's in um, the workstation, and I've got it at an angle so you can kind of see what's going on here. Now, before we start putting pickups and wiring and all this kind of stuff in, we're going to get some basic layouts. You've seen me do this before if you've watched any of my stuff, but we're going to get some things laid out here. First, I want to talk to you about the setup that came with this. There's typically posts that go in here. Um, we have to take a reamer and work them just a little bit to get everything um, to fit right. You do not want to drive the posts in if you choose to go with that option because you'll crack something. I also, trust me on this, there is a hole right through this hole here that goes this way, which is for a grounding wire to come off your harness and come up and attach to the, this part, the metal part that sits on metal with posts. It's kind of a tunematic bridge configuration. But that hole is there and it grounds your strings. Your wiring harness needs to be in contact from a ground to your strings. Now, I do that in cigar boxes with uh, a piece of license plate or copper tape or a combination of all that. But we're going to abandon these holes. We're going to leave them here and we're going to go instead with this because we're doing chrome. Okay. And it's a tunematic um, configuration. Uh, but we need to know exactly where this sits and and how we do that and like i said i've shown you this before is we take you don't have to have this beverly hills yardstick you can just use any yardstick and you take this and you put it where the nut goes the back of the nut the part of the nut that's away from the tuners and you put that up at the edge of the uh fingerboard or fretboard and we're going to start with the number one side and I've got a piece of tape here and you're going to see if I put my finger up there and come down to the 12th fret we want to make sure it's flush up there we come to the 12th fret in the middle of the 12th fret we put a mark and then we measure on each edge from the middle of the 12th fret and put a mark here and one here and that's how you get your intonation that mark is right there and that is how this bridge will sit now sometimes you see guitars with the floating bridges turned one way or the other whatever I can also um, put a piece of metal over this to hide it that goes along with our theming I think I might do that but in any event, you don't have to turn this because you can screw each one of these individual uh, contact points for the strings forward or back by using these set screws. When you put these on, you want to make sure that your adjustment screws are accessible. So if 
if you the rest of your guitar is going to get in the way point them this way in this case we have a pickup that goes right here so best to point them to the back now something is very practical is we're going to use a trapeze tailpiece this is why they call them trapezes so typical configuration three points of contact you find the middle of the guitar here you screw this in now you want to make sure that while you're screwing this in that this part rides in the right spot if you don't mount it right it'll be off uh, kilter you don't want to do that and then on top of that you want to remember we're going to have to ground the strings since this has wood here that we're going to match to the top by by sanding but since it has wood, that won't be the way to do it. And running a wire up from here and trying to wrap it around, that just looks tacky. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a wire through the body and come out the tail block here. And it's going to ground to one of these screws. Then this is in contact with the strings. And that's how we'll get our ground. But something I want to tell you that you don't want to learn the hard way. Before we stain this and even after we do... They bookend the wood. There's two pieces of wood here. And so they plane them, they do whatever, and then they put them back into itself to get this pattern. And we can see that the wood for the center was bookended right there. So that's the middle of the guitar, right? Yeah, right. We also know that the sides of the guitar here and back here are made different from the top. So you would assume that we're... The two side pieces come together down here. That's the middle, right? No, not always. And then to further complicate things, we have actually glued this neck on ourselves, And I can't guarantee you that it's all not crooked this way or this way or whatever. So let me show you a little trick. You are going to take a straight edge. Make sure it's a good straight edge. And make sure that you've got access to a considerable amount of footage on the side of your neck you're going to put your straight edge right up against the top of the or the side of the neck Then you're going to take a piece of tape you're going to lift this up and you're going to put this right here like so okay and then you are going to make a mark what did I do with my pencil? I'm going to get out the love pencil out of the wink can. I'm going to make a mark right there. Then I'm going to go to the other side of the neck and do the exact same thing. Make sure there's nothing in the way. But you want a clear shot where that straight edge sits up against. And the neck gets wider as you go down and thinner as you go up. You know that. So I've got another piece of tape here, and I'm just going to put that underneath there, like so, and get this back where it needs to be. And I'm going to put a mark at the edge of that. You see that? Now, for clarity's sake, now that you've seen that, you can kind of see that what we're going to do is we're going to measure between there and there. So let's do this over. I'm going to put that long piece there. We're going to do the same thing. I get my camera stand and my light back here in the way. But put that there like that. I'm going to mark that like so. Come to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now, this is where the millimeters come in. Somebody asked me where Metricator went. Somebody used to tell me, oh, why are you using inches? Well, because I don't like to have to figure out what one half of a thousand sixty-four thirty seconds is. I can just go, see, that says zero. That's pretty easy. What does that say? Six. That's 60. 65? No, it's not 65. It's 64. What is half of 64? Yeah, that's right. It is. Let me make sure. We still have everything lined up. There we go. Yeah, that would be 32, which is right there. That, my friends, is where if I transfer this mark to run down here, the middle of the trapeze bridge needs to be right there. 
So when we line that up by bringing a piece of tape down here, we are actually going to discover that the center, what appeared to be the center of this, is about two millimeters off, which pitches this this way. Now, if this is this way, you want to remember that the strings are spaced here on something that matches up the knot, and this is where the playability is. So if I've got this in the wrong place, the strings are going to try to twist. Everything's going to try to twist. These are going to be coming in at a weird angle onto the top of the bridge. It's sitting up here like this. Oh, by the way, these have inset. So while you're handling these here, don't let those fall out to get string tension on it. But again, I'm going to put the adjustment screws to the back. And then once I get this in the right spot and measured up, and mounted that's going to help a lot keeping everything in order here one last thing i've had somebody tell me if you get people that are popping the strings up like death letter blues the first note is popping the heavy string up here some people don't like these i'll pop them off so you end up using a, a wooden trapeze bridge or not a trapeze bridge but just a wooden bridge without this i do like this because it lets you fine tune your intonation so I am going to mark this off, mount the tailpiece. And when I mount the tailpiece, I want to make sure that I pad this with some tape and something so it doesn't scratch this beautiful top. I would hate to have this happening. Anyway, we want to tape that off and then tape it this way so it's not flopping around. So we're going to get everything in order where we know our layout is right. Then we're going to put our wiring and our pickups, and then we'll get around to figuring out how we're gonna junk pile this thing up. So, watch me now. Okay guys, let's try a different camera angle. Um, you can see that I've taken a small bit and drilled three holes. There's the tail block in here that goes in quite a bit. And now these line up, and this gives you a better look at that hole right there is really not in the center of what appeared to be the center of the guitar, it's off a little bit, but I guarantee you that is the center by using the headstock alignment method that we use now. You'll notice that there's a hole right there. It's bigger than the other ones. And so we want to use the tail piece, as I reference, as a ground. So the strings are going to attach to the uh, trapeze tail piece and in doing so, we can ground the string. So we're going to have to get to our wiring harness, which is inside of the guitar, or will be. So I've taken a piece of this cloth covered. It's, it looks kind of retro or vintage, and it's called pushback wire because, you see, you can actually push back the stuff. This is pre-tinned. It's really easy to solder. So I've taken a piece that's going to get me to the F hole and a little bit beyond. I will make this connection last. We're going to put the input jack over here somewhere and cover it with a, a surround to strengthen it up. But what I need to do now is I need to fish this through this hole here in the center. Now all this is going to be covered up by the tailpiece. So as I put this in, I'm going to kink it this way just a little bit. And what that is going to do and turn it up just a little bit because what that is going to do is it's going to make it appear up in the vicinity of that F hole. Now, once I get close to this, I should be able to take this little coat hanger thing that I have and reach down in and pull it up right there like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over itself a little bit and make a loop like so and that way if it falls back down in there I can fish it out and then I'm just going to leave this here like so we'll wrap it over itself you don't need to do a whole lot because our two um, pots are going to be right there but we're going to come up to here and wrap it around itself like this and then we're going to go ahead and cut it I'm going to leave her some ample room because once we get here, we're going to unwind this or use the push back feature of the wire 
and get about that much bared. And then when we go to put the screw in for the tailpiece, the wire will be wrapped around the screw and it will mash against the body with the tailpiece. And that's how we're going to ground our strings. So we're just going to put this like this. You don't want to be fishing this out later, so kind of watch it. Okay, guys, here we go. It's time to start junk pile. Now, do not covet my blue slide because I had to find something to do while Hurricane Hillary, the eye of Hurricane Hillary was coming through. That's right, nonstop action acting California right where I'm at. So I'm trying to get things back to what it was before Hurricane Hillary came through the desert. Who would have thunk it, right? So anyway, I made some slides. Now, what are we doing here? Well, we are putting a set, a modern set of Diarmid M65C pickups on this thing, along with a wiring harness. And you can see that we fished the ground wire that's going to come off the tail piece, which is a trapeze. And we've got everything set up for our bridge, including marks right here. Now, I think this looks kind of dull here. Can you tell there's a surround on the pickup? Um, oh, by the way, guys, when you're dealing with pickups, especially when you're going to take the surround off of one of these, they make compressors for the rings because sooner or later, these springs, which look like ballpoint pen springs, are going to pop off, fly across, and you'll be trying to use a big pen thing, and that won't work. So, oh, did you see this? luthier magnet do not put all your screws and everything on the back of this and expect that that's a good thing don't i just left that on there because that's the way they came that's how they shipped them get a luthier magnet put everything on it and these things will not escape this is like getting out of parchment penitentiary getting off this magnet if you're a screw or a spring and that's why there's a parchment penitentiary coin on the headstock and other lies anyway Here's what I want to do here. I want to create some contrast, and you saw the rest of the Marvel Mystery Oil can up on the headstock. So I want to put some Marvel Mystery Oil can around here. Now you can tell where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer that the uh, surround ring, uh, whatever you call it, it's not a ring. So you want to go up here a little bit and we're going to cut this in and cut it out so here's what i want to do i want to take about 10 millimeters not 14,068 30 seconds i want to put about 10 millimeters around each surround which means i have to mark this i have to cut this part out i have to drill all these holes and mimic this it's a lot of hassle to go to but it will stand out it will look good and then when i go to put the license plate on here for the pick guard there's some more stuff i'm gonna have to do so there's a lot of custom work to do here but i'm going to measure about 10 millimeters i already said that and you know what's funny these measuring devices you can never get one that has everything so yeah i have to use this one that has millimeters here and mark off about 10 right there and then I can take this set it on here like so and then go around and mark off 10 millimeters everywhere and then I'll just cut it out with the metal shears and get some nice contrast around here when it comes time to wiring this up we're just going to run a straight volume and tone and put both pickups onto this because this is a trash bar blues bar dive bar machine and that's what we're going to do so i'm going to get these on here again it's just basically tracing this out taking a nippers or drilling a big hole and in each corner and cutting the center out of here and getting this the way i want it i'll see you in a bit all right guys what do you think of that let's put it in here oh yeah the thinner side of the surround always goes towards the neck always remember that and there's a way that poles sit here and here as well it's got a little bit of scuff up and now what we're going to do is we're just going to once everything is laid out 
which means we're going to put the bridge here. I marked off what was going to be the bay side with blue. I always do that. Um, I am going to put a notch in this to get this away from here. But also I'm going to put the adjustment screws towards the tailpiece because that's going to be a nightmare to try to adjust that. You want to remember that you adjust the height of the pickup in relation to the strings here and here and move it up and down so those springs again use a compressor if you have a spring compressor that's good uh, everything will fit there now I'm just gonna drill holes there 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 and there those are already in the metal piece and then I will secure all of this with chick flick teal screws all right guys let's catch up we got a couple of holes here one here and one here that we're not going to use and we're going to put some relic wood in we've got to stabilize this oil gauge here and make sure that it is okay and let's catch up what I've done here we're going to put the wiring harness again in and we've got uh, the trapeze ground wire going back to the back and up coming through the F hole we've got the harness done and then this is what our pickups look like. They're going to fit there okay. Holes are drilled through the metal already. We might do a little bit of trim in here depending on how it looks. And then we took the kit pick guard and kind of used it and a couple of other pick guards we have to kind of do that right there. Okay, there's a lot more to do, but you'll see this thing when it's done and making noise. So go get something, sit down, and be ready to be completely and utterly disamazed. All right, guys, I was going to tell you something before I cut that last clip off, but I must have forgot. Anyway, I want to put all kinds of stuff on here. Like so, I got a plethora of chick flick teal screws. I am so ready to go, but I do have to tell you this. This is the last time that we're going to be able to get to this body. Because once we put all the scrap apparatus on here, our access will be limited. So, there's a secret ingredient that's both secret and dangerous. Sounds mysterious, huh? Yeah. So, what is that secret ingredient? Well, we want this to shine. We don't want it to be dull. We want the finish to be protected. Uh, but we don't want it to look brand new. So we get this little sheen on here. Not Charlie sheen, just regular sheen. This is how I do it. Boil linseed oil. Now, you're just going to wipe this on here with a wipe all WP. W-Y-P-A-L-L, W-Y-P-A-L-L. -L. It is made out of paper. It's lintless. And you just put some on here like this, and it's going to give you a nice sheen. I have this fine decorative bowl here. You see this? Just dip that in there a little bit, and look at that. And what will happen is this stuff will dry out. It will penetrate the wood. Now the stain will take it up doesn't take too much of the stain off you see there anyway this stuff is an oxidizer meaning that it gasses off kind of like lighter fluid in a way but the viscosity and makeup of it is a little bit different than lighter fluid because if you try to put this in your big lighter yeah don't do that anyway you see how this works this will soak into the wood it will keep the wood in good shape and it will give us that shine that we want without it looking like it just came out of a spray can anyway it's just that simple we want to get this on before we put all the final stuff on wipe with the grain will be your final lecture I give you about this part anyway now let's throw that away right wrong because here's what happens. I told you this stuff is an oxidizer. So if I wad this all up, it's going to get hot. 
it gases off, it releases vapor, and in that reaction is heat. So if I throw this up here, when I come out here in the morning, I'll find that this is smoldering all by itself. So you would simply lay it out outside, let it dry out, do not wad it up because you will have a boiled linseed oil burn up. Now, if there's someone around you that has a privileged relationship with you, look in your law book with them. He says, I don't want to indict anyone. And we're using code so no one undermines your shed. Anyway, if you find pieces of this and it smells like boiled linseed oil, maybe somebody is putting this around in hopes that your shed will burn down and then you can get back to paying attention to them and whatever their dismal interests are. You don't want that anyway. Be careful with these. I can't stress that enough. Boiled linseed oil, rags, lay them out. Throw them in the fireplace if you have to. But do not leave them sit around to oxidize and burn your shed down. I'm going to get on putting all this stuff on here. Now, like I told you I would before, this public service announcement. Okay, guys. Plethora of details I'm forgetting to show you. We pulled the grounding wire for the strings up through the F-hole. I showed you that. And I also told you about this pushback wire here. See, it does that. Now, I've stripped enough of this out. But what I want to tell you is if you've ever run across any kind of a guitar, an arch top or something that has had volume and tone controls up here, and any kind of a tailpiece made out of metal, in order for you not to have buzz, you need to ground your strings. And I guarantee you, they ground the strings to the tailpiece because the strings are metal and so is the tailpiece. So, expect when you pull off a tailpiece, you're going to find a wire. And if you let that go back in there, or you're new at this and you don't even know the wire exists, you'll have a buzz and then somebody on one of these channels will go, dude, did you do this? And everybody will be like bagging on you. But don't worry, I'm here to take that heat. So, remember again, we've pulled this through here. I pre-drilled the holes that will hold the trapeze tailpiece here see them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something pointed a pencil an awl not an owl but something pointed and I am going to admit to you that I dropped my awl here it is look at that no there's no blood on there and my mother-in-law can be accounted for anyway we're going to take this and we're going to wrap around here like so. You see that? Mash it down. That gives us this slinky looking thing, which is the principle of vascular hydraulics in a palm tree, which accounts for a palm tree's re resistance against splitting as it sways in the wind. Hmm, there's an extra bonus point. But you see that? That mysteriously will go here. When I mount this, so as I mount the tailpiece, I'm going to make sure that I put this in here and look at it. Nice chick flick heel. I have a plethora of those. Check that. I think I told you that before. But when I mount this like so, and run this in here, that ground wire will ground the strings by contact here. You're welcome. I know. Okay. Okay, we're wrapping up here. And I think you're going to recognize some stuff y'all know and some stuff y'all don't. So pay attention to stuff you don't. Y'all know this is like a triangle, not the piece of paper with the holes are. One, two, three. That is a triangle. I hope you knew that part. And this is the back of the neck. And that's about the middle. Now, this is an awl, not an owl, an awl. I'm going to put the point of the awl where it's about in the middle, like so, and I'm going to hit it with this hammer. See that? One. Oh, the guitar is strung up. So it's crying out in pain or pleasure, depending. That's two, and that is... 
3. Now, I have to show you that there is a triangle right here. I'm going to protect that piece of paper with our lives. Now, something you may not know is there's a guy named Reuben Lacey. He was playing blues music. He was run out of town by somebody pretending to preach, pretending they were a preacher named Son House, who later became a blues person, who later was rediscovered in the 60s, who later had to be taught how to play his own music by a gentleman named Alan Wilson from Canned Heat. I'll bet you didn't know that this piece of wood right here came from Reuben Lacey's church, that this piece of wood right here came from the grounds of Paramount Record Company, where Sun House recorded his blues music along with some other people. And this piece of wood right here came from the grounds where Alan Wilson died. What do you think all of this has to do with this, let's call this, Acumental triangulation. Well, wait a minute and I'll show you. Please do not tell me that he is going to drill a hole. Me, I'm talking about myself in third person now. A hole or three in the back of this neck with this quarter inch plug cutter. Please, somebody stop me. Come in. All right, what would you say if I told you that this guitar has more mojo in it than the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic on a Saturday night? But wait, we're not done yet. It's time to flip it over. There's more. All right, we are back at it. You thought that back was mojoey. You need to think about the front. We have these holes right here that we're not going to use. We'll put them in there. What's all that about? Well, the back was about math, remember? Accoutrementol. Accoutrements. Look that up. Accoutrementol triangulation. That was the math part. This is going to be about the reading and history part right here okay so let me tell you a story there was a guy named George Mitchell summer of 67 he left the University of Minnesota with his wife Kathy and a little Volkswagen looking for old, some old blues players they come where he was looking for Fred McDowell so he stopped at the Stuckey's in Como Mississippi yeah that one right there Stuckey's Como, Mississippi, it's right there. And said to the attendant, hey, do you know one Fred McDowell? And the attendant said, oh, well, yes, I am Fred McDowell. And uh, George Mitchell wrote this book called Blow Away My Blues. If you find this, don't blame me for what it cost. It took me forever. I got one from the Coastal Carolina Community College. Books that they don't want anymore. How could you discard history, baby? Anyway. I have a friend near Como, Mississippi. He went to this very stuck, Stuckies and got me these twigs. Look at this. Yeah, so you know what that means. That means that these holes right here, right here, will be plugged with wood. That is where Mississippi Fred McDowell was rediscovered by George Mitchell, Mitchell in 1967. Okay, I'm going to put these in, file them down, and I will close this episode out.
Okay, guys, that's about enough for y'all. Um, there's some glue to dry and a little sanding to do here and there and a little bit of touch up. But I guarantee you the next time you see this guitar, it will be the final episode of the playlist. I'm going to give you a link to it right up there right about now. But you will see this. Where's the chick flick teal pointer again? Top to bottom. We'll do the whole Vanna White thing without Vanna White. But I'll have a treat for you because you know you have to hear it. And you know I can't play it. Now, all this stuff I was telling you, it is true. I swear by this. You know what? I got way better things to go to hell for than to lie to you about this triangle, the magic triangle, and this stuff here. This is real. So, that said, I got a lot to do before I see you again. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe because if you don't like this stuff, I don't think I can help you. But I will pray for you. For you. Yeah, you, especially you. No, the one to the left. Yeah, you.